Hello Indie Game Fan, the Steam Next Festival really compressed new releases into the other weeks, so a huge week begins with Terror of Hemasaurus, a self-described smash em up title where you play as a giant monster destroying a city, eating the inhabitants, stomping on tanks, and swatting helicopters out of the sky, looking similar to the arcade classic Rampage, although I believe there are progression systems in this, looking like my kind of game. I've had my eye on internet generation for quite a while, since this pixel art action adventure game looks alright, set in a dying chat server where moderators are abusing their powers, so it is up to you to overthrow the establishment. I'm not sure how a chat room translates into this top down world that you can explore, but the art looks pretty good and the action decent. I covered Reefland during the Steam Next Festival and here we already are with the release being the latest relaxing city builder where you simply place tiles and buildings on an island using synergies such that you keep getting additional tiles looking absolutely relaxing. Nitro Kid made quite a splash when it was revealed at E3, since the overall vibe and attitude of this synthwave roguelike deck builder tactics title is neat, combined with the fact that you are a martial artist taking on robots and mutants, so I hope the strategy portion is deep enough. I love farming sims, which is why Mars Base got my attention. A pixel art title by attempting to grow plants on the red planet, turning it into a fertile farmland as part of humanity's expansion. It might be on the simpler side of things when it comes to farming sims, where I don't think there are animals in this, but rather has you managing greenhouses, but the sciencey bits of tech and upgrades should be interesting, although this game has terrible SEO and is very difficult to search for due to the name. I know, A Plague Tale Requiem is probably a AAA title, but the original was neat with awesome rat technology, so I wanted to give a heads up that the sequel will be out this week. I feel my mind going. I know. Think of your brother. We have to carry on. Oh no. Welcome to basic training. Rosie. Ha ha ha! Here comes Rosie! 
Dinosaur Left 4 Dead or Deep Rock Galactic probably describes Second Extinction well, where mutant dinos have taken over Earth and you and your squad has to reclaim the planet, with quite a number of characters to play as, plenty of upgrades and seasonal content, which makes the 1.0 release of interest, although I do wonder what the post-launch content support will be like. Ortega. I'm going in. You are our front line in the war effort. As individuals, you are lethal. Together, you will be unstoppable. Each successful mission will suppress the dinosaur menace. Each failure will be their victory. The Valiant is an impressive looking historical squad based real time strategy title set in medieval times, looking similar to games like Ancestors Legacy. It comes to us from one of the studios under the Embracer Group banner, looking kind of big budget and is not a common genre these days. This is a journey that began over a decade ago. With Theodoric von Ackenberg and Ulrich von Grevel, Knights of the Templar Order, brothers in faith and in arms. They stumbled across something heavenly, a piece of a sundered divine relic never meant to be possessed by man. Ulrich claimed it, driving a wedge between the knightly brothers, and so Theodoric left the Templars, vowing never to draw his sword again. That, however, wasn't meant to be. Ulrich is a great crusader now, on the warpath to find and unite the other pieces of the relic. Should he succeed, he'll unleash untold evil upon the world. And so Theodoric was drawn into pursuing him across Europe, towards the Holy Land, to stop him. He was joined by new companions on the way. A trusty archer Conrad, his loyal huntsman, a fervent Gascoigne poised to undertake chivalrous adventures, the eager mercenary cat and Grimhild Eidotter, and myself, Reinhardt, Lord of Kempton, Knight of the Teutonic Order. We came together for different reasons, yet each of us took on Theodoric's quest against Ulrich and seek to protect the world from the great peril that Wild and the Artifact would wreak. I pray to the Lord for strength to prevail, but Ulrich's allies and henchmen keep opposing us every step of the way. And yet, bound by camaraderie and a common cause, while drawing inspiration from Theodoric's determination and faith, our warband marches onward. Ever resolute, ever dauntless, ever valiant. The Warhammer license has been used in quite a number of games, but nothing quite like Warhammer 40k Shooters Blood and Teeth, a run and gun action platformer where you play as Ox, attempting to kill your own war boss, even having co op support for up to 4 players. Smaller games begin with Cult of Babel, a bullet heaven roguelite that did make a decent impression during the Steam Nix Festival, so try out the early access version this week.
September 21st, 1987. My nightmares are getting worse. I have to finish what I started. What I am about to do has not been approved by the Vatican. The third and final chapter of Faith, the Unholy Trinity releases this week, where the developer is releasing all three in one package on Steam, just in time for Halloween, where this is an 8-bit horror game about a priest struggling against demonic forces, coming to us from publisher New Blood Interactive, so the quality is all but assured. I don't know how to pronounce this game, so Cthulhu Heads, please let me know, but this is a deck builder where you're attempting to break the seal and unleash ancient gods upon the world, having a carousel or roulette-like mechanic where rotating cards which is similar to a ring of pain, fueled by fear, delusion, doubt, the ring adjusts with every action, choices cause a chain reaction, and is apt for October. Switching gears to the opposite end of the spectrum is Flying Neko Delivery, a flight exploration title where you play as a cat witch, flying about on a broom delivering packages, looking like a delight. Similarly, on the cozy end of things, Harmony's Odyssey is a puzzle adventure game set in a world of strange creatures, with the main type of puzzle being towel swapping, which is not that mechanically complex, but does have some wonderful looking mini games as well. A PvPvE top-down shooter that looks intriguing is Hell is Others, where you can either play as our protagonist or as one of the shadow creatures in different instances of the game, set in a city of endless night, and has an interesting concept although I am concerned about player population.
Also fitting for October is Horror Tycoon, when we are building your own haunted house and attempting to scare your visitors, where you can eventually unlock traps and hazards that will really kill them, having to hide this dark secret from the police by covering your tracks through hiring security personnel and lawyers being oddly twisted, which wasn't what I was expecting. Jennifer Wilde, Unlikely Revolutionaries, is a black and white adventure game where a lady is investigating the death of her father, somehow getting the ghost of the poet Oscar Wilde to help, looking pretty intriguing. Dale, please, barkeep. Ooh, giant sprinkles. Another adventure game of interest is Lucy Dreaming, one that is very British, and while not exactly a scum engine game since there are less options, it sure looks to be inspired by games from that era. better stuff. normal day when Polly and Scott called me. They asked me if I wanted to join them on a road trip. Monster Prom 3 Monster Road Trip is the next entry in the very popular choose your own adventure dating sim and will be for fans of the series. What could go wrong? They said. Little did I know then, this was going to be more than just a regular road trip. This was going to be a true Monster Road Trip. Nova Land, Emilia's Mission is a product demo for a neat looking crafting factory builder, so check it out if you love games like Factorial. We stand at the final crossroads, as if we have a choice. The Pegasus Expedition is an ambitious looking sci-fi grand strategy title where humanity has entered the Pegasus galaxy in search of refuge, looking to be for fans of the genre. We are who we are. 
Similarly, another strategy title of interest is the Shadow Government Simulator will essentially put in charge of the Illuminati on a mission of world domination. Hidden within society, pulling the strings, corrupting it, bribing it, seducing it. You caused our stock markets to crash in East Asia. You sent busters after our unions in Latin America. You immersed our European pawns in scandal after scandal. But we found you. Your agents are uncovered. Your allies neutralized. Your puppets have had their strings cut off. Any last words? <laughs> yes. We now go live as the commander gives a press conference explaining the reason for his infection. The Wii Home is a pixel art action roguelite that looks very cute where a cat and its pet dog must fight their way off an island and to get home, looking pretty neat. Void Scrappers is another bullet heaven title but with a sci-fi theme, we are blasting away at alien spacecraft looking to be a neat take on the genre. Let's kick off the top 5 with Sujo of the Magi, a roguelite turn-based tactics title that looks to have inspiration from games like Into the Breach, although it also added deck-building elements. It comes to us from Singaporean developer Yong Just Yong, who I'm always happy to showcase games made right here in my home country. that told you to come here while you were sleeping? Yep. Why the hell do you have to be so reckless? <laughs> Are you okay? <coughs> yeah. Save the restore balance. An impressive looking isometric action adventure RPG is Batora Lost Haven, one which I did preview and was looking forward to this month, with an interesting mix of settings as well as a duo energy system that you have to manage to be used both in combat and puzzles. Let's do it, Ave. I don't think it's a loot-driven title like Diablo, but the action looks good nonetheless, so let's hope the other parts of this game holds up.
In the age of the great forgetting, a spreading pixelation renders everything and everyone into decay. The land of Nostalgia needs a high fidelity hero. Go away, hero! Uh, right. The last hero of Nostalgia brings humor to the very grimdark, souls like genre, which is certainly a fresh take which I'm interested in, where their trailers are excellently made, so enjoy. Welcome to the last hero of Nostalgia. Uh, okay, start over. Yes, indeed. It is called Nostalgia. Where the. No, no story! This is the gameplay trailer! Yes, Nostalgia is the world of video games, and it needs you! Well, that looks familiar. Terrifying and perilous bosses! Fight together! And die together! Let me regale you with a tale of corruption, greed, and heroism. Nostalgia's memories had flattened like books without pages. Enter the hero. Pixels were the problem. We can fix this. Customize them. Pick a class. You are not worthy. Level up. Perfect! Oh, you'll need equipment. Others can guide you. Side quests. Really get stuck in with this hero business. Danger absolutely everywhere. I am trained. Do 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 All of this and much, much more is coming soon! Wishlist, the last hero of Nostalgia, and defy all my expectations. See? You are the hero! Potionomics was also very high up on my list of games to look forward to, since this game has been very long in development and has some of the best 3D models and animations that I have come across. You run a potion shop and have to brew, haggle and sell these items to adventurers, but can also enlist their help in getting you some rare ingredients. There are other vendors in town that you can befriend and even romance, with the addition of deck building systems pertaining to the haggling, quote unquote, combat seems neat. 2022 has been the year of Vampire Survivors, so of course, its 1.0 release out of early access gets top billing when nobody saw it coming 8 months ago, so kudos to the developer. But I'm interested in the changes made over the course of early access, where it will probably make the game of the year list in a couple of weeks. 